Hello everyone, welcome back to Axangel RC. On today's menu we have the relatively new CUAV Sky 2 Nano airspeed sensor. I really like the pitot tube, looks massive and shiny. Not for very small planes though, but looks very good nonetheless. The sensor itself is encased in a nice plastic shell, which feels like it may even be 3D printed. First impressions were very good, but to give you some background as to my experience with COAV airspeed sensors, I have used their older and larger Sky airspeed sensor on a number of projects over the past few years, and on paper that one sounded very good in that it had a drain system for use in wet weather and also a heating element to keep the tube heated so it wouldn't freeze in the cold, all of which sounds pretty awesome on paper and should help make for a better user experience. Sadly, my experience in every case with this sensor was quite disappointing in that it never was able to provide a consistently accurate measurement, which resulted in very weird and erratic behavior of the flight controller when it was allowed to use the airspeed sensor. When CUAV released this version and asked me whether I would be interested in reviewing it, I jumped at the chance because it would make for an interesting comparison given my experience with the old one. After a bit of a delay with the build of the plane which was supposed to carry it, I was ready to install it, though opted out of the factory Hero airspeed sensor mounting place and mounted it on the nose of the plane so it will get the cleanest air possible for the highest degree of measurement accuracy. Right off the bat, the first advantage this tube had over the old one is that it is a lot more compact, mainly due to the fact that the sensor board is not built in, nor does it have the heating element, all of which make it this nice and convenient shape and size for easier installation, especially when I removed the stock stand and printed out my own to build into the nose while still allowing me to remove it if I need to. The old one was not as streamlined looking and had everything built in, and convenient as that sounds, it made it quite bulky and quite tricky to find a place for on a small aircraft. The Sky 2 sensor itself was mounted on the inside of the Hero's detachable nose and I utilized one of the quick connectors for the wiring so I wouldn't have to disconnect cables manually every time I disassemble the plane for transport as that would unavoidably eventually cause something to break or be severed. Very convenient those connectors are, Master Yoda said. Save the wiring they do! So you know, I'd go with the wise guy on this. So once installation is done, you need to set it up in your flight controller. I have no idea if this works in iNav, but there is full support for it in ArduPilot, which makes it very easy to use. In Mission Planner, you need to go to the airspeed settings and the only thing that would need changing initially would be to set the airspeed type to option 8, Drone Can, as this sensor connects over CAN. One of the good things about CAN is that you can connect a whole bunch of stuff over a single port and in my case the CN7 autopilot I have only has a single CAN port so I had to use a splitter board to connect the Sky 2 Nano and the HERE 3 GPS unit together. They both have different CAN addresses so the autopilot is able to differentiate them easily. Now, the next step would be at the flying field. Prior to takeoff, connect to the flight controller and go to the airspeed parameters. First option on top is the auto calibration, so enable that and write the parameters. Then, if the airspeed readout is showing more than 3 meters a second on the HUD, despite being stationary on the ground with no wind, you need to do a pre-flight calibration. In the data tab, under actions, first drop down menu, select pre-flight calibration and then hit the do action button. Make sure to cover the pitted tube so there is no wind around it when you do this, then uncover it and you are ready to go. Just for reference, I have mine set to kilometers an hour, not meters a second. Once in the air, if you can, set the plane in loiter or guided mode with a pretty large radius, something like 200 meters should be good. If you have running telemetry, you would be able to see the airspeed ratio parameter changing as the plane is flying. At some point, I like to change the direction of the circles which can be done from the parameter list by simply putting a minus in front of the radius value and it will change the rotation direction. In my case it was already at minus 200 meter radius so I just deleted the minus and promptly enough the plane made a u-turn and changed circle direction. Official instructions say to land after a few minutes, go to the parameters and disable the auto calibration and that is pretty much it. But since I have a working telemetry link to my laptop I can disable the auto calibration while in flight. 
From here on, you would only need to do the pre-flight calibration from the actions tab before flight if the airspeed readout is showing some weird number which wouldn't be expected in your current circumstances, just to make sure all is good. In the air, I have to say that compared to the old one, this one does show what feels like accurate airspeed estimations given the flight conditions. I have done a number of flights now and even before I calibrated the sensor it was showing very adequate readings. From this point on, we Pilot, you have two options, either to keep things as they are and only have the airspeed data on your OSD or telemetry for your personal reference, which is fine for good old FPV flying, mostly in non-autonomous modes and manual mode, or you can allow the autopilot to use the data from the airspeed sensor, thus increasing the safety and reliability of your system overall. Remember the stow with the hero in the last video? All of this could have been avoided if I had calibrated and enabled the airspeed sensor for use for that flight. The autopilot would have known airspeed is low, which is the important speed you need to pay attention to, and would have eased up on the elevator to keep the speed up, preventing the stall. Now, since I disabled the auto calibration in flight, I thought, why not enable the use of the airspeed sensor as it is in flight and see what happens. You can do that in one of two ways. You go to the setup tab, then optional hardware and then airspeed and tick the checkbox for use or you can go to the full parameter list, airspeed section and basically do the same in a more convoluted way by setting the airspeed use parameter to 1 and clicking the right button. Now I want you to notice something, in my settings prior to enabling the use of the airspeed sensor, the plane maintained throttle at around 40%, which is what I have it set to in the basic settings and that is the only reference it has to go off of to maintain speed. The logic is that this is system and gear dependent, so it has to be set specific to the airframe and setup you have, so it would work for it in most cases. So the autopilot is working from these settings as it appears, but notice that this. The moment I write the parameters with the airspeed enabled for use, look what happens. All of a sudden the autopilot drops the throttle and you can see that now the speed it is gunning for and trying to maintain is actually the airspeed you have set for it and not the cruise throttle percentage which is the better way to do it. And you can also see that as it goes around in a circle changing its orientation relative to the wind it either increases or lowers throttle with much greater precision compared to before in order to maintain the cruise speed of 17 meters a second that I have set for it, which is roughly around 61 kilometers an hour. From the ground it sounded very good and it felt like it was moving more efficiently now since the throttle actually varied down rather than stay the same all the time and compared to the old version of this sensor this one is actually working. The old one made the autopilot go crazy and do some weird shit with the throttle running through the battery in half the time it was supposed to so I ended up disabling it and leaving it connected only for operator reference. Now, at the end of the day, you need to choose how you're going to use this yourself, if it will be used only for reference on FPV flying, or if you do something more serious like industrial work and you need the added safety since the plane will be operating mostly in autonomous modes where you will see the most benefit. Unlike the old sensor, this one would not fare well in wet or wet and cold conditions since the tube is not heated and as far as I can tell it has no drain system for water. That being said you shouldn't be flying in such conditions anyway and that being said the old one despite having all these advantages did not perform very well and to be honest I am not sure if the design of the tube interfered or there was another issue but I never got good autopilot operation with it enabled for use. Time will tell how well this one would fare in the long run but it is looking very very good so far and now officially this will be the first personal rig of mine which will have any kind of airspeed sensor on it because it does seem to work for a change. The reason why I've postponed this so far personally has been that every time I've used one on a project or seen somebody around me use one it has been accompanied by a plethora of problems so I thought I'd skip that pleasurable experience but it seems skipping it is over and it is no longer problematic but like I said time will tell. If you have enjoyed this video like, share and subscribe, links can be found in the description below. A big thank you to everyone who is supporting this channel in any way and thank you for watching till the end. Fly safe and I will see you in the next one.